class today on patterns uh, we'll be covering the crab pattern uh, which is an extension pattern and uh, we'll cover how we can look at trading that before we get going we'll just run to the disclaimer spread betting forex and CD trading carry a high level of risk to your capital and can result in losses that may exceed the initial deposit trading these products may not be suitable for everyone so please ensure you understand all the risks associated with trading Information and comments provided under no circumstance are we considering offer or solicitation to invest, and all information provided is believed to be accurate. The date the information is produced. Nothing here should be construed as investment advice, and information provided within the room is the personal opinion of the moderator, not trader mode. This content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice, and trade mode does not accept any liability for the content of the comments made during the session. All right, so let's get on to the pattern session. So we're covering the crab, which is an extension pattern. Uh, we've co covered the butterfly pattern, I recall, uh, which is also the extension pattern. Let's just quickly recap on the butterfly pattern. So what we have is, let's change this to red. In terms of a... In terms of the butterfly pattern, which is an extension pattern, we have basically price rally. It pulls back and looking for a very specific retracement. So looking for a retracement to the 786 or 79 percent retracement. And then I'm looking for price to rally from that point. OK, so if we label this so far, we have point X. We have point A, we have point B, and then when price starts to move up, we're looking at point C, and we'll draw first from point A down to point B, okay? And what you'll notice is with the exact retracement to the 786 or 79% retracement, the 127 extension aligns with the 1618 extension. Okay. So when price moves down, this is where you're looking to buy when price comes into this area right here. Okay. That forms what you call your butterfly pattern. Okay. So in terms of just finishing labeling this, you've got A, B, then C, and then D. Okay. Like that. So we're looking always looking to buy at point D. That's the point that we're looking to uh, to find and obviously to trade. Okay, and, and this is a bullish pattern, so we're looking for price move to the upside. Okay, this is exactly the same as this this pattern that we covered already. Okay. So this is the the buy zone right there. Price comes down, reacts, bang. Okay. So same. I can just get rid of these lines. So same thing. Okay. Price rallies. If we label this, this is point X. This is point A. Point B. Have a look at the retracement. See the retracement of point B. It comes down to the 786 retracement here. Okay, and then it rallies up to point C. And it's the point D point here that you're looking to enter at. Okay, that's the buy zone there. And you have the 127, 1618 extension forming the buy zone. Okay, so just back to our diagram here. So that's the butterfly pattern, and it's referred to as an extension pattern, as it's at the extension points that we're looking to actually enter the market, okay? It's an extension pattern versus something like a retracement where you're entering at like one of these retracements of XA, okay? That we refer to as a retracement pattern. We're looking at the extension, so prices extending beyond the 100% area. So that's just a quick recap on the butterfly pattern. Now, the crab pattern 
is very similar except the retracements vary now you can look at the retracements being either but or between the 38 percent 50 or 618 i personally like to look at just the 618 okay so i keep it pretty simple so i'm looking for a very specific retracement to do the 618 retracement of xa and then i'm looking for price to move off that level now if you recall the Gartley pattern is where we have okay remember the Gartley pattern is a retracement pattern so the Gartley pattern forms here at get rid of this here yeah, point d where we have the 79 retracement of xa and the 127 extension of ab lining okay you see how those two numbers sorry i'm seeing this in shift like this you see how those two numbers align like that so that forms the buy zone so if price came down here i'd be looking to buy at point d looking for a move up okay if however the market failed ah uh, sorry guys if the market however failed right and it broke down below point x then my next point of reference in terms of patterns would be what we call the crab pattern so if you look down below all the way down here you see how we have the 1618 extension of XA. Do you see how you have now a 2618 extension aligning with the same number? Okay. And those numbers align because if you move back up to the 618 area and we adjust this number, have a look at where those those numbers vary. Okay, so even just like falling short of the 618 area, it brings the extension off and if it goes below the 68 you can see the extensions also off however if it retraces exactly to the 618 the extension comes right in at that 1618 area so you have a 1618 extension with a 2618 extension and this is where i'm looking to buy when the market gets into this area so it's a much deeper move down. Okay, so remember for the butterfly, we're looking for a 786 retracement of XA, and we're looking for a 127 extension. For the crab pattern, I'm looking at a 618 retracement and a 1618 extension. So pretty straightforward. So you see how the structure varies from the XA swing. The retracements tell me kind of what pattern I'm looking for. So if price moves between the 38 and 50%, then I'll start thinking about the possibility of a BAT pattern, which is a retracement pattern. If price moves to the 618, I'll think about a Gartley or this crab pattern if price moves to the 786 and retraces then i'll think of a butterfly pattern and if it moves to the 886 and retraces i'll think about what we'll call a deep crab pattern which is very similar to kind of what we're looking at just different retracements okay so it's the the retracements of the xa swing that kind of give me a heads up to what i'm looking for in terms of patterns Okay, so this is the bullish version of the pattern. Let's have a look at a bearish version. So we have a drive down, which we'll label X. So the initial leg is always XA. Okay, that's always a nice clear swing. So we draw a fib from X to A. Now, we're looking for a retracement and i'm particularly looking here you can look between the rules 
stays between a 382 and a 618 retracement i'm personally looking at the 618 retracement okay and then i'm looking for price to turn down from there so if i now label this this will be point b and this once price starts to turn from here this will be point c and once i've got these points in place, i can then draw my fibs i'm just going to adjust this slightly from a up to b okay so you see how when price moves up to that 618 retracement of x to a and then it comes off that level if you look all the way up here we have the 1618 and the 2618 extension lining up okay so what i'm looking for is for price to move all the way up here break above point x move through the 127 extension and move up to the 1618 2618 extension like that and this would be labeled point d okay so it's point d that i'm looking for that's the the area that i'm interested in to look for a selling opportunity okay so this is a bearish pattern and we'll move down okay and this is also a bullish pattern looking for a move to the upside okay any questions on that so pretty straightforward I want to identify a clear-cut swing and then I'm very specifically looking for a retracement to the 618 retracement before looking for price to break below X or above X depending on the pattern and the completion point is at the 161.8 extension of XA okay so now that we know what the pattern looks like the bullish version and the bearish version let's have a look at how we can possibly trade these patterns okay now you know as i said there's tons of ways of doing it i'll give you uh, a simple way you can take it from there so we're looking to enter at the 1618 extension okay and I personally like to just use a limit order at the zone and you can wait for confirmation you know whatever is going to suit your temperament really so the entry is going to come in at the 1618 area and my stop loss is very simply I want to place it and everyone's going to do it slightly different but you see the 2o extension from x to a that's kind of where I want to put my stop loss okay So a very specific area to put a stop loss below the next extension down. Okay, so that's my risk. And in terms of my take profits, because it's a very deep extension move, we've normally got a lot of space to work with, depending on how our price moves, because the CD leg is normally very aggressive. Okay, it normally really pushes in aggressively into these areas. So if I'm going to be looking at take profit areas, there's a few ways of going about it. A very simple way is to simply just take a fib level and draw from point A down to point D. So let's say price actually starts to turn from here. I've got a, a point in place. Then you'll see how you have the 38% retracing that would be the first area where either I want to be taking profits or I want to at least get my stop to break even. Okay. And you'll see in this case, you see the 38% of A to D, it lines up with this area here at point X, which would be a level of resistance. Okay. Just adjust this here. 
So we have resistance from point X with the confluence of the 38%. Okay, so it's going to it's going to basically pick up a lot of sell orders around that area. What you want to think about in terms of in terms of trying to trade these patterns. Okay, remember we're using confluence from the fibs to find zones to enter at. So we've got a 1618 and 2618 extension zone to be looking for a buy. Okay, so it's a confluence of extensions. When we want to take profits, okay, just use the opposite thing, and you can use this with anything, any method you trade. Build a confluence zone on the opposite side of your trade. So if you if you long look for confluence on the short side because that's more likely going to attract a lot of sell orders around that area okay does that make sense so for example in this case you'd have point x would which would be previous let's say support it's likely to become resistance as well as if you drop the swing down it's a 38 percent retracement okay so that would more than likely find sellers coming in at this area Okay, so that would kind of be the first area, either as I said, to take profits or at least get risk out of the trade. And then once that's done and dusted, you've either taken profit, you can either look at the next area. So at point, you see point B, this was previous support. It's also, it's now likely to act as resistance, right? And you see you'd have confidence with the 618 retracement. So once again, this could be a place to be taking profits. Normally, I would just be looking to take the full position off here at the 618 area. Okay, or just kind of below it. So very simple is if price moves up to the 38%, we get stopped to break even. And target the 618 area. Okay, so it's going to give you, you know, in terms of risk. Well, we obviously our scale is kind of all a bit messed up, but let's say 17 pips, and we're targeting like 36 pips somewhere around there. Okay. That's a very simple mechanical way of doing it. You know, there's literally there's tons of ways of going about it. You can look for confirmation instead of using limit orders here. You can look for candle confirmation or something down in this buy zone. So we just step back here. So when price gets into this area here, the 1618, 2618 extension area, that's the buy zone. You could wait for candle confirmation before entering. Okay, there's nothing, there's nothing saying you can't do that. A lot of people do that. Okay. So that's to the long side. On the short side, very simply, we want to be entering up here. Okay, the 1618 is the buy or sell area. In this case, sell, sell area. And once we're entered in and price is, you know, turning away, then I want to very simply just take my fibs and draw from point A up to point D, okay? And to keep it simple, you see when price comes down here, you can either A, look for confluence, you see how you'd have point X, and the 38% retracement, that would add confluence. So you'd have that support level from point X. So resistance becomes support with confluence of the 38%. Okay, so if the market is strong, it may just find this and continue up. It may find support here at the 38%, okay? So either take profits over here at the 38%, or at least get your risk out of the trade and then look down below that. And you see on the next area here, the 618 area is a very nice place to be looking for profits. In this case also, it aligns with point B, 
as a confluence point. So we have resistance likely to become support. Okay, so that's kind of where we go. And sorry, in terms of stop loss, exactly the same as previously. Stop above the 2.0 extension. Okay. So entering at the 1618 area with a stop loss above the 2.0. Make sense, hopefully. So pretty straightforward. And in terms of take profits, that's probably like, you know, as with anything trading wise, it's probably the most sort of difficult thing to do. Because we never know, you know, what the market's going to do next. So, you know, you don't know, should you be taking profits here or there or whatever the case is. And, you know, you may get out too early, whatever the case may be. But just have you know have something in place that's you know nice and simple to follow and try and take out as much emotion as possible so basically just you know plan in advance really some guys like to scale out of their position so they scale at different different levels so maybe you want to scale some at you know the eight percent because if it turns back on you at least you've got some profits banked in scale some more at the 1618 sorry at the at the 618 so that does you know let's say you got this let's say you got this area of support so we've got 38 percent with a level of resistance likely to become support so when price moves down from point d into this new 38 uh, 38% retracement. You can maybe bank some profits here. Okay, so we bank some maybe partial profits there. We could then move our stop loss down to break even if we wanted. So the risk is out of the way. And then when price moves down further, if it does move down further, then we could bank some more profits here. So we scaled out. 38% and then 6 on 8 or you know if another the level lines resistance you could do that as well and then what you could do is you could see if price runs and maybe target like a 127 extension of AD okay and obviously you know the further price goes the less likely that it could get but you know if it does it's a bonus Okay, so that's the crab pattern. Now let's see if we can find one. Uh, that's always uh, the other thing is they're not very common. Okay, they're not, not very common um, occurring patterns just because of the nature of them uh, to move to those extreme uh, extreme points with obviously the the specific retracements. Okay, uh, cable we had one here. So we had one in here. You see how? Let me just 30 minutes, probably a little bit clearer. But you see how we have this leg here from here down to here. Let me just change the color in here. So we measure it from the high down to the low. Okay. You see our price rallies up and it finds resistance at the 618 retracement okay so it then starts to move off that level so it rallies up like this so if we label this we've got point x then we've got a then price rate is up to the 600 and it starts to pull back okay when it starts to pull back I'd label this point B and if I drew a fib I draw from this swing low up to this swing high okay and price pulls back you see it finds 
support at the 50%. And then it rallies and it moves up. And you see when it breaks above point X, this is kind of where you've got time to kind of look for the actual trade. But have a look up here. We have a 1618 and a 2618 extension. It's all coming within four pips. Okay. So this is the sell zone right here. So this is, if we label this, this is ABC. And then this is point D. Okay. So that's where we're looking to enter the pattern. So we're trading limit orders, entries right here, 1618. Stop loss goes above the 2.0. You can put it anywhere you want really, but uh, I find this is a very easy mechanical way of doing it. Okay, so that's the risk. In this case, it'd be about 40 odd pips. And the stop loss, Sorry, not stop loss, the tape off we measure from A. And you see the D is slightly higher than the actual extension points, but it draw a fib from A up to D. Okay, we have the first area is right here. Here's the 38% fib level. That would be if price gets there, that would be the break even point. And you know, even this is it is discretionary, okay? You see how price has moved down. It's come three pips away from the level, okay? That to me is, is good enough, right? Now it may, you know, it may rally back up to your entry point and then, you know, come down and continue to drop and you can say, well, it didn't actually hit the 38%, so, why would I get my stop to break even? And other times it'll come down, miss it by a pip or two. You don't get your stop to break even and it rallies to new highs and it stops you out of your full position. So, you know, there's no right or wrong and there's no there's no kind of black and white rules in trading, unfortunately. Okay, you've got to just kind of use your gut. Okay, do what feels right. But have structure to guide you, okay? So structure and obviously experience. When I say use your gut, it's obviously just the experience factor. So that's the pattern there. As you can see further down, we've also got here's point X here. This is the the level of likely support, okay? doesn't quite line up with any of the fib levels and then very simply take profits would be 618 area okay so it you know if it did get down there it's a nice it's a nice little trade okay but you've got to obviously have the patience to sit through this okay now let's see if we can find another example Um, let's have a look. Not very pretty. Um, that one didn't get there. As I said, they don't, uh, they don't occur very often, so. And it's always, you know, far easier to kind of be finding things in, in live, live time. So even this one, you can see the, you see how price comes down, but it actually spikes below into very shy of the 
if you draw fibs on this, just have a look at this, right? If you're looking here at the 1618 as a buy, and you draw fib from the high to the low, have a look how far off the extensions are. Okay, it's miles away. So you know, just that slight difference from there to there makes all the difference in the world in terms of that conference. Literally, on the pattern side, like a six pip move, and it's varying that by you know seven, eight new pips. Okay, so as I said, it's a very specific retracement that I'm looking for. But see how price comes down and it respects. In this case, it respects that one six one eight. And it takes off like a rocket. Okay. Okay, so it still worked, but it wasn't a it wasn't a qualified pattern for me. Okay. Let's see what else I can find if there's anything else about. Obviously, in real time, as I said, it's much easier to spot these things because you've literally got a ton of time uh, to to mark your charts up. This one is a bit iffy, man. This one may may have been may have been. I don't know. Let's see what are the what are the numbers? Possibly, possibly in here. This one obviously would have been a fail. It knocked you for about sixty pips if you're trading just on its own. And obviously, if you're waiting for confirmation at the level, you would have saved yourself a few pips. Okay. In terms of not taking the trade, so there's one there. Um, it's not, it's not the overly prettiest one, but may have taken the trade on that. Uh, where else do we see any? What is the retracement on this bad boy? You can see, like you know, those seventy, the 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 six one eight. It doesn't, just doesn't get hit exactly on the on the nail very often seventy point seven seems a far more common number actually uh let's see if there's anything else here. There's kind of very close, but you can see we don't get we just don't get down that low. So you know we're literally going through a ton of that. Obviously we're just skimming through it, but you can see hopefully as I said it's not a it's not as common as some of the others of the patterns, that's for sure. Let's see if we've got something on any of the other pairs, maybe. Um, Maybe on the swing here. 
no, also 70.7. 70.7 is a far more accurate number, I think, than the, than the 618. It's just people don't realize it exists. What about here, maybe? See, once again, see the 7.7 .7 holding. So the butterfly pattern, which is the uh, 127 extension, the forming of that, far more common occurrence then and this is also deeper than the 618 and 79 I had actually there was one let me get rid of this quickly there was one on the euro I think I traded here if I recall yeah no i didn't trade this one but here's one here actually there was another one i was looking at so here's a perfect one uh actually did it don't tell me it broke the high no i didn't okay so here's here's one here from do you see how You've got this perfect number right in here. So we rally up like that. Let me just change this to green. Price pulls back. You see the exact number stores are at the 618. Okay. Then rallies up again and it can't break above the high, which it does not. And very simply, we're now looking for the leg down. And you see how price surges into that area. Okay, pretty much to the pip before exploding to the upside. Okay, so that was a very nice one. Um, there was another one somewhere else. Don't think this one. This one didn't get high enough. This one would have been all the way up there. So just having a look here guys, there's nothing uh, really very exciting that stands out here to be honest. Maybe there's one in here somewhere. This one even, this one's messed up. Because of these spikes kind of all over the place. You see this drop off here. And then we rally up to the 618 area and then we sell off okay the pattern for me is invalidated when we break above the high like this and then we break below the low okay so if we if we just broke above the high and we stayed above this this low here 
then I'll be looking at this area here for a trade. Okay, you can see price surges up and it reacts a nice 50 odd pips off there, but no go in terms of uh, the pattern. Let's have a look, maybe it was, this one looks too big. Nope. Too shallow. This one could have been classed uh, as a, as a crab. I'll look at kind of drawing it in here somewhere. I personally wouldn't trade this, um, but the rule is between the 618 and the 38 percent. Okay, so this you see it hits the 50 area and it drops. So this would be kind of your sell zone. So that could have effectively have been a pattern, but I'm a little bit more strict with my with my rules. Okay, so I'm only looking for that 618 retracement and you can see it's just it doesn't happen very often okay it just does not happen very often maybe So I think we'll kind of wrap it there. I think, guys, this is, uh, as I said, it's not a very um, a very common pattern, especially the way I've just shown it and the way I trade it. Um, but when you can see them, and they're always, they're going to be much easier to kind of spot uh, during sort of the live market time, okay? That's what's nice about trading. For me, what's nice about trading is it takes it. Uh, a decent amount of time to kind of set up. I don't have to jump in front of the computer straight away and take a trade. Uh, 7.7. 7. So yeah, as you can you can see, we've kind of gone through a ton of different things, and we've probably missed a few here. Um, just obviously trying to find a couple, but it's not uh, not a very common uh, pattern unfortunately all right so hopefully yeah I think we'll just wrap it at that guys um, hope you guys get the idea so I'm looking for an initial leg up and then a retracement very specific 618 retracement and then a rally once again and I'm looking for the 1618 to align with the 2618 extension, okay? That's the buy zone for me in case of a bullish pattern. And obviously just the reverse. When we look at cable, that's the bearish pattern, okay? So we'll wrap it at that, guys. I uh, hope you found it helpful, and we will catch you guys all tomorrow. Cheers. Thanks for watching.